Okay, so we, we've gone back to uh, Haven, and as you can probably tell, I've got a brand new, well, it's not a brand new outfit, but I've put a new outfit on because uh, I've been giving some people some stuff. Vivian and Sarah had, like, no weapons whatsoever. Why did they not come with weapons? Like, that makes no sense whatsoever, but apparently they didn't. And they didn't have it like hardly any uh, armor either, so it was like you guys did not come prepared. I would have thought you would have. Anyway, we're gonna chat with some people. Yes. Again. Let's uh, let's talk about the seekers. Can you tell me more about the seekers? The seekers of truth were born from the original Inquisition long ago, when it united with the Chantry. Seekers stood above the Templars watching over them but also investigating magical events they couldn't handle. We were meant to be incorruptible, above reproach. How seldom does reality match the ideal? Ah. So, what's our Seekers, though? But what are Seekers, exactly? Those who know anything of us think we are Templars. We do not use Lyrium, however. Our abilities are different, as was our original purpose. We disciplined the Templars and were accountable only to the Divine, and not even her, truthfully. So you led the Templars? So the Seekers commanded the Templars? No, the Order didn't assume command until after the Rebellion. The Templars have always feared us. When a Seeker arrived at a circle, they knew trouble was afoot. That kind of power is troubling. You begin to think you are the only one who can solve the Which is what the uh, Lord Seeker feels like now, right? If someone insists it does, they are the blind ones. Could that be fixed? Do you think that kind of problem could ever be fixed? Possibly. Though the Seekers themselves would need to change. They were clearly not willing to, even though they abandoned everything they stood for to avoid it. In my heart, I believe they can still be salvaged, but not by their own hands. So, um, what abilities do you have, then? You mentioned that Seekers have different abilities than Templars. Entirely. A Templar's abilities come from Lyrium and are designed to hunt mages. Ours come from ritual and many years of dedicated training. We cannot be possessed by demons and are immune to mind control. Useful, considering our role. Seekers can gain other gifts, so that depends on the individual. Ah. So I just had to turn to see what I looked like. I wanted to look at my abs. So what are your gifts then, Sandra? What kind of gifts do you have? I can set delirium within a person's blood aflame. Both mages and Templars bend before my will. Some seekers use it to interrogate, others simply to paralyze. Once there was a seeker who could use it to kill. That particular gift is considered rare. Oh. So how did you become a Seeker? Or how do you become a Seeker? Most Seekers begin training in their youth. I was much older. An exception due to my noble birth. We train rigorously for years. Our bodies and minds must be elastic to undergo the vigil. And most fail even then. Ah, what's the vigil? Is the vigil some kind of initiation? It is the right every seeker must go through in order to summon their gift. A full year of fasting, prayer, and separation from all distractions, including other people. We empty ourselves of all emotion, focusing only on the purity of our devotion. And the moment it finally ends, it's wonderful. Faith we alike. I cannot put it into words. Uh, was it magic? Was it some kind of... Magic? I don't fully understand it, to be honest. If the vigil was not so arduous, I'd say more should attempt it. What if mages never needed to fear possession by demons? I'm told it is impossible, however. I suppose I'll never know the truth of it now. So, why do you think the Seekers rebelled, then? Why did your order turn against the Chantry? We originally united with the Chantry for a treaty that stated they would keep mages under control. It was felt Most Holy had tacitly allowed the Circle of Magi to vote on its independence, thus breaking the treaty. The Seekers saw themselves as justified, 
and they led the Templars into a war of righteousness. You disagree? You sound like you disagree. We knew what was happening at Kirkwall, where the Mage Rebellion began. We looked into reports of Knight Commander Meredith's harsh treatment of her charges years earlier. But we found so many shocking cases of magical corruption, it was decided her actions were justified. Hmm. If we'd been there when it happened, if we'd looked yeah, harder... Yeah, she was the root cause. Uh, I hate that you always have to like, have, like, you know, I agree, Major should be free, it was inevitable. Uh, let's just let's just focus on what Cassandra say. You seem to care, care deeply about it. You seem to care a great deal about it. Too much, if you ask the rest of my order. When faced with a problem, the Seekers would close ranks and crush it. We would find an answer, but only once we felt we weren't being coerced. The moment the Mages voted for independence, our response was predictable. It was difficult to watch. Enough talk for now. I have no more questions. God, it's so loud in this area. I hope it's better once we inevitably leave this place. Was there something you needed? Are you with anyone? Uh, no. Anything I should know? Is there anything I should know? Radcliffe wasn't always a refuge for mages. Some of our recruits have family there. They fear them. Well, I will definitely have a look, even if I don't choose to side with majors. So we need to head that way anyway. So tell me about Templar life. I'd like to know more about the Templars. If you need insight into what the Order is doing now, I'm afraid I can't offer more than you already know. Anything else, I will answer as best I can. Okay. Um... What do Templars do? Do the Templars do anything besides hunt mages? Templars protect against the dangers of magic. Before the Order left the Chantry, that meant serving in a circle. They were also tasked with tracking apostates, or fighting demons inevitably summoned by the weak or malicious. What do you think of mages then, Colin? I'm interested with that, how you've been uh, in the previous two games. What do you think of mages? Are they all a threat? I've seen the suffering magic can inflict. I've treated mages with distrust because Times without cause. That was unworthy of me. I will try not to do so. Not that I want mages moving through our base completely unchecked. We need safeguards in place to protect people, including mages, from possession of the beast. So why did you become a Templar? Why did you join the Order? I could think of no better calling than to protect those in need. I used to beg the Templars as our local chantry to teach me. First, they merely humoured me. I must have shown promise, or at least a willingness to learn. The night captain spoke to my parents on my behalf. They agreed to send me for training. I was 13 when I left home. Hmm, that's not very old. 13? It's still so young. I wasn't the youngest there. Some children are promised to the order as infancy. Still, I didn't take on full responsibilities until I was 18. The order sees you trained and educated. And what about your family? Do you still keep in contact? What about your family? Did you miss them? Of course. But there were many my age who felt the same. We learned to look out for one another. I was just about to say, does he live near Kirkwall then? And then I'm like, no, because he's in for Elden in the first game. So, how are Templars trained then? What does Templar training involve? There is weapon and combat training. Even without their ability. Templars are among the best warriors in Thedas. Initiates must also memorize portions of the Chant of Light, study history, and improve their mental focus. Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy your training? Learn everything. If I was giving my life to this, I would be the best Templar I could. You are a model student. <laughs> I wanted to be. I wasn't always successful. Watching a candle burn down while reciting the chant of transfiguration wasn't the most exciting task. I admit, my mind sometimes wandered. Uh, you lived in the circle? You lived in the circle. What was a typical day for a Templar there? <laughs> typical? 
The last time I was in a circle was right before it fell apart. Nothing was typical. Before that, then? Certain rituals require a full guard. A mage's howling, for instance. I've attended a few. Most of the time, you merely maintain a presence. On patrol or in the circle. Ready to respond. Maintain a presence. Mages pretend to ignore that presence. But they're watching you just as closely. Did you not speak to the mages then? There's no, like, co conversation? Speak to each other? Some do. But Templars are supposed to maintain a certain distance from their charges. If a mage is possessed or uses blood magic, they must act quickly, without hesitation. Your judgment cannot be clouded. Of course, ignoring one another does nothing to foster understanding. Right. So then, tell me about their vows. Do Templars take vows? I swear to the Maker to watch all the mages, that sort of thing. There's a vigil first. You're meant to be at peace during that time, but your life is about to change. When it's over, you give yourself to a life of service. That's when you're given the filter, your first draft of Lyrium and its power. As Templars, we are not to seek wealth or acknowledgement. Our lives belong to the Maker and the path we've chosen. Ah, that is all then. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Another time. The way you said that makes it sound like you're just fishing for stuff. Like, answer all my questions and uh, I won't kill you. I don't know. Uh, who will we start? Well, let's talk to Krem first. Hey, boy. Can I help boy. you with anything? Uh, let's discuss the iron bull while he's right there. No, tell me about the chargers. Can we talk about the bull's chargers? Best company you'll find from here to the Anderfells. In my time with the chief, we've gone up against everything from bandits to magic trees. We're expensive, but you'll never doubt we're worth it. Want to know anything in particular? Okay, what are your abilities then? Do the Chargers specialize in anything from a tactical standpoint? Bull doesn't want us large enough to work as an army. We're better as shock troops to skirmishers. We've got archers for hitting enemy infantry, Dalish with ma more archery, and Skinner and her people on the flanks. Rocky handles fortifications and traps, and Stitches keeps us all fighting. They mostly hold back. I'll lead the frontline fighters with Grim, and the chief goes wherever we can hit something. Okay, well, uh, you follow standard rules? I assume the chargers observe the standard etiquette. What does that mean? Absolutely. Clean record and clear to take jobs in any country you can name. We accept surrenders for ransom from mercenaries, nobles, and soldiers wearing a lord's colors. Our prisoners are treated well, injuries tended. We'd want the same for any of ours who got captured. Okay, so I, tell me of an interesting job then, Krem. You said something about everything from bandits to magic trees. I'll admit to some curiosity. Right. Sylvans. That's what Dalish called them. Apparently spirits can possess trees, too. Some noble in the Dales, and they really don't like it when you call them Dalish nobles, had a haunted forest. His family had abandoned the land, but he wanted it back. The chief bought us all axes, and in we went. Between the axes and the torches, the Sylvans weren't too bad. Worst part was the squirrels. Goodbye, Krem. We'll talk later. Maybe we'll talk to the Iron Bowl. Have good form. Colin's putting his Templar training to good use. How do you know he's a Templar? Did Colin tell you he was a Templar? He's not wearing the armor. He didn't have to. Might not be a Templar shield, but it's a Templar holding it. He angles the shield just a bit down. Helps direct fire or acid away, so it doesn't spray right into your face. And I learned the same thing when we trained to fight to Vinter Mages. Your Templar is doing good work. Yeah, he is. I'm impressed by what Cullen has accomplished with the troops. Damn right. It takes time to build a group into a team, but he's got their loyalty. Now he just needs them to make a decent shield wall, and they'll be good to go. Biggest problem for the Inquisition right now isn't on the front line. It's at the top. You've got no leader. No Inquisitor. Uh... Ooh. Uh, I don't know whether Reth would be like, I could be the leader. I feel like she would be like, Cassandra should be the leader. But then again, they are following my lead, so I'm like, uh... Yeah, we'll say Cassandra... Would I? I have been a leader with the mercenaries, though. So she is. She does take charge when they're on. Yeah, I'll say perhaps I should lead. Then maybe we need one. 
I'd be willing. You? Huh. Why you? Uh, I was chosen by the maker. No. Uh, someone should. I'm willing. I can seal this. That doesn't necessarily make you a good leader. Well, neither of those reasons make you a good leader. Uh, someone should. I'm willing. Nobody else seems to be stepping forward. And since I can seal rifts, I'm here whether I like it or not. If it proved necessary to have an Inquisitor, I could make a go of it. Hmm. You sounded like real Kunari for a second there. Talvasha. My people don't pick leaders from the strongest, or the smartest, or even the most talented. We pick the ones willing to make the hard decisions and live with the consequences. Ah, who knows? Maybe you seal the breach. The Tantric gets off its ass and all those soldiers go home. <laughs> you think? No. It, happen. it won't. Oh, I like that. He's like, maybe this will happen. It could. It won't, but it could. Okay, so let's go inside. And let me freeze for a moment and then head to the shop. Listen wants to know if you have anything that can make cabin food. Let me just sell all my valuables. I just want to sell the valuables, please. Perfect. If I had something with that kind of power, I'd be retired. It is the list yeah, people need to stop yelling at me all the time. I was going to say, where is Balak? He was in his tent, of course. Of course. Need something? Oh. Uh, uh, I've already asked about Red Lyrium, haven't I? I want to know more about Red Lyrium. I'll tell you what I can. Okay, so I, I can't I talk about that. Red <laughs> yeah, not really my I feel like that should go away until you have more information, you know? Need something? Uh, I have a personal question, I guess. Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. Uh, how do you know Cassandra? No. Yeah, how do you know Cassandra? How do you and Cassandra know each other? You heard about the Kirkwall Tantry being destroyed? The guy responsible used to be a friend of mine. The Seeker has questions about that. Ah. And what do you do then? I'm not clear on your line of work. You're a merchant? I'm a businessman. My family has a seat in the Dwarven Merchants Guild. Merchants buy and sell goods. Businessmen buy and sell stores. In my spare time, I manage a spy network and occasionally I write books. Occasionally, huh? Uh, what shops do you own? What sort of shops do you own? Mostly we invest in money lenders. Auction houses, a few mercenary companies, a couple of smithies. I think we own half a beet plantation in Ravain somewhere. Most of that's my brother's doing. Bartrand had business sense. Not much tact, but loads of business sense. <laughs> and could you do Liliana's job? I doubt it. If you run a spy network, why is Liliana our spy master? To be honest with you, she's... Just a better spy master. The truly great ones can keep their distance. They don't get attached to their people. Me, I always wind up babysitting my informants and worrying about their families. We're in better hands with her. Uh, what books do you write? I've been reading hard in Hightown. You're an author. What kind of books have you written? I tried my hands at a few genres. My crime serials are my most popular. Hard in high town, guards breaking the rules to get things done. The tale of the champion, the most famous thing I've written, or infamous maybe. I started a romance serial once, Swords and Shields, but to be honest, I don't have a knack for romances. Most of my stories end in tragedy. Probably that says something unfortunate about me personally. Um, tell me about your crossbow then. Where did you get that crossbow? I've never seen one like it. Bianca, she's one of a kind. I won her from Paragon Smith Bronca in a game of Wicked Grace. She was such a sore loser. Ran off <laughs> the deep roads in a huff, and that was the last thing. Yeah, that's, that's what happened, huh? 
So why did you call it Bianca? Who was she named for? I can't tell you. Why not? And the reason for that is complicated. It's the one story I'll never tell. We just have to leave it at that. Alright, so you're from Kirkwall? Are you from Ferelden? Or Lay? Free marches. Born and raised in Kirkwall. And despite whatever you've heard, no. Kirkwall's mm. not that bad. <laughs> we'll agree to disagree there. Thanks. Valic. No problem. Although I don't think she's ever been to Kirkwall, so she can't really say. Okay, let's talk to Sarah. Chasing the Lord Seeker, I hear. Anyone who thinks they need Lord in front of the name, that's bad. Bet he's got a portrait taller than he is. That's your first clue to a total arse. Fact. <laughs> I, I do agree with you there. Uh, let me have a look. Oh, I don't have the option yet. Give me a moment. Ready for waiting. Hey, Sarah. Aha, I need a lock picked. I was wondering if you could look at some locks for me. What, the doors under the chantry? Yes. <laughs> you know about them? Places have doors. I just wasn't interested in poking through some sister's breaches. Good to know about you, though. Consider them open, yeah? Yeah. It took me, I had to come back twice because, like, I clicked it with my mouse, didn't work. Apparently you need to interact with it by pressing the F button. Like, really? But we'll have an actual chat with her. So, um... Any opinions about our allies? What do you think about the people who have gathered? Which, the ones who do things or the ones who give orders? Um... Solus. What about Solus? Solus? <laughs> His head's cramped up a thousand years ago. Varric? Anything to say about Varric? Varric? Too clever. Always saying something, but never saying it straight. Uh, Vivian? What's your opinion of Vivian? She's Vivian. A bitch, but she knows. She better. What about the Iron Bull? Thoughts on Iron Bull? <laughs> He makes me wonder about things. He's got nothing on you, but that Kuhn stuff. I don't know. Cassandra? Thoughts about Cassandra? Not as busting up as she plays, right? Tough, though. I'd stand behind her in front of anything. Aww. What about my advisors? What do you think about our spy master, ambassador, and commander? Liliana is pretty in places. Where I've seen her, too. Or heard she used to play. But that'd be mad. Now, Josephine, she's as good at humbling her kind as I am. Just with less mess. Knows her business. You have to have it. And Cullen, I suppose if you want a jackboot, you get a big one so you can grow into it. Nice pair, though. That's good for now. We'll talk later. Good, right? I'll be here. And then we go to at the Cullen. Position troops out at Rickliffe now. Giving those people some real... Solus. As I explored the fade, I felt the presence of an intriguing artifact. Okay. If you are willing, I would like to locate it. I have marked its location as best I could determine. I am uh, not against doing that. Well, I think it's too early to tell you about to talk about yourself. But yeah, we'll we'll do that. We'll We're heading later. there next anyway. Measuring the veil. Usually I don't get that from him. Because, like, you can run into it while you're running around Hinterlands. So you, like, bump into, like, is it a Dalish elf that's just, like, hanging around there? But, uh, it's interesting that he leads you to it anyway. Uh, Loriana, what are you doing? I saw you on the park. That sounded weird. Reports of fade wrecks and demons keep coming. The people are terrified, and it's only getting worse. The only thing that will calm their fears now is the hope that someone out there can save them. You have to be that someone. No one else has any power over the rift. That's the plan. Your legend will spread, and Thedas will learn to trust the Inquisition. 
Why do you care about mages so much? Why do you much? want me to seek out the rebel mages? Why do you care? I've known mages. Some of them were better people than me. Yeah. And yet I'm free and they're not. It's not right. Win was amazing. Who else was a Morrigan? I was like, who else was the mage in Dragon Age Origins? Uh, any updates? Anything I should know? I've nothing to report at the moment. Okay. Uh, you're just in his left hand. I want to ask about herself, but it's they just too early to talk to anybody about That's themselves. What, of it? Uh, what is the left hand? What exactly does the left hand of the divine do? A divine always has enemies, and Justinia had more than most. I protected her. I watched, had an ear to every door. I identified threats, and I dealt with them. Why so many enemies? Why did Justinia have so many enemies? There were many who felt she was unfit to be divine. She had a past, a worldly life. And like many, she wasn't given to the Chantry as a child. She chose it. And somehow that made her unworthy. And because they thought she was unworthy, they wished her harm. Yeah. Sounds like you're invading the question, though. You still haven't told me what you did, exactly. I handled difficult situations that couldn't be resolved through more delicate... Right. So why don't you join my party then? I could use the left hand of the divine at my side out there. Every agent out in the world is my eyes, my ears, my blade. Wherever my people are, I am also. Coming with you, leaving my post, would blind and bound me. Do you see? I do see, even though I'm disappointed. So why start an inquisition then? What is the point of an inquisition? Justinia would have started the Inquisition if the Divine Conclave failed to restore peace. She hoped that with enough support, we could challenge the very tenets of the Chantry. She wanted the Chantry to treat the mages fairly. But sometimes I wonder, why stop at mages? The Chantry has committed many injustices. If we're going to change it, why not change the whole thing? <sighs> it's just a thought. None of this will be possible if we fail. Oh, I'm sorry that she died. Oh, I don't know whether she wants to hear that. I'll try my best. I'll try not to break anything. That's good to hear. Tell me more about Justinia. I'd like to hear about Justinia. What was she like? A friend. A mentor. Like me, she had secrets. Made mistakes. You made the same mistake. I think her followers responded to that. How did you meet? How did you and Justinia meet? I met her a long time ago, before she became divine. Before she was Justinia. When I met her, she was Mother Dorothea. I was at my lowest. Broken. Lost. And she saved me. No, no, wait. <laughs> she hates it when I say that. I saved myself. She just showed me it was possible. Uh, I'm not going to ask the very awkward we more than friends because that's none of my business and it'll just upset her. But we'll continue this later. We'll talk more later. Okay, we've done everybody outside, so let's talk to Vivienne. Vivienne? There you are. Yes? Um, tell me about the circle, then. I wanted to ask you about the circle of magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? Uh, what was circle life like? What was it like to live in a circle? My dear, your question is the root of all problems with mages. I cannot tell you. Every circle was different. Their Templars were different. Their politics unique. And every person within each tower had an experience of circle life unique to themselves. Some people suffered and some were content. Some were cruel, some compassionate, and some indifferent. The same is true of people everywhere, in all circumstances, whether they are mages or not. Right. What about your experience? What was your experience with uh, circle life? 
So tell me about your personal experience with the Circle. I enjoyed life in the Monstimard Circle, my dear. It was an edifice devoted to knowledge and refinement. And there is comfort to be had, you know, in the company of fellow mages. Those born without magic will never truly understand us. Was it... was confinement hard? You must have been under constant supervision, being forced by Templars to live in the tower. Was that hard to endure? My dear, I have a suite in the palace and a wing at my dear Duke Bastien's estate. I have never been forced to live anywhere. Most circles allowed mages to live away from the tower, either on their own or in service to the nobility. All that was required was permission from the first enchanter. Some circles were harsher in their restrictions. Perp Hall was the worst, but it was the exception. Most were quite permissive, perhaps too permissive in retrospect. Right. So tell me about the Templars then. You must have an opinion of the Templars after living so long in the circle. Having opinions about Templars, my dear, is exactly like having opinions about mages or Navarre. Okay. Tell me yours. Some who are impossible to endure, and some who are utterly charming. I have suffered insults at the hands of those in the armor, but no more than I endured from nobles or tradesmen in Val Royale. Personally, I have found the Templars a useful tool, skilled at keeping more unpleasant elements at bay. And how, wasn't the uh, circle disbanded then? If the circle disbanded, how can you still belong to it? The circle is an idea, my dear, and an idea cannot be dissolved. Many of the first enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the circle in two. The rebels follow her, the loyalists follow me. Oh, I didn't know you were that important. Shouldn't you replace Fiona? If you lead all the loyalists, why are you only First Enchanter, and not Grand Enchanter? Grand Enchanters are elected, and since there are no First Enchanters besides myself, no vote can be held. I could name myself Grand Enchanter, but the title holds no meaning now. When the circles are restored, that will change. So how did the rebellion start then? I've heard only rumours. How did we come to this state with the circles in revolt? A failure of perspective that infected circle leadership. Mages lived solely in a world of Templars and mages. They could not even imagine what was beyond the tower walls. Perk Hall gave the world a reason to remember its fear of magic. A mage killed hundreds with a snap of their fingers. Across Thedas, a new tangible fear of magic grew. Commoners and nobles alike called out to the Chantry for protection. But the malcontents in the towers thought nothing of this. They cared only for themselves and for their anger at the new Templar restrictions. When a mage attempted to assassinate Divine Justinia, again, the mages protested the investigation. The leadership chose to vote on independence based on the intolerable conditions imposed by the Templars, sparing no thought to the fact that magic was more feared in the aftermath of these attacks than it had been since Tevinter's day. So long as they had their freedom, they could care little for riots, angry mobs, or about pitting mages against each other. Okay. Did you know Fiona? Are you familiar with Grand Enchanter Fiona? We've met. Before her horrendously ill-timed and selfish vote for independence, I thought her adequate at her job. In her dotage, she could not handle looking after the well-being of so many people. We would have done better to replace her years ago, to let her spend time gardening. Oh, you do not like her. Were they justified? Did they have cause to rebel? In the aftermath of their terrorist attacks? Was that really the most opportune time to break away? By all means, protest abuses by the Templars. Just don't do it in a way that says mages support wholesale murder. By voting when they did, my colleagues all but declared war upon the ordinary people of Thedas. War in which we are outnumbered a hundred to one. Mages are fighting mages, huh? I thought the fighting was only between mages and Templars. Why are mages fighting mages? The vote for independence was carried by only a small margin. But Fiona chose to let the motion stand. 
Those who opposed a rash declaration of war against the entire free world had little choice. By breaking from the Chantry when they did, the rebels declared themselves in support of mass murder. Anyone who did not wish to support terrorism and the slaughter of innocents was forced to take arms against the rebels. All right. Thank you, Vivienne. It was very interesting. I'm not sure I completely 100% agree with your side of things. But, uh, she's definitely got her opinion. Oh, I forgot to talk to Josephine. I will talk to her when we come back. I'm not backing out, okay? That's nothing to do with fairness. We simply can't accommodate them if they bring that many servants. I will speak to the Duchess. She can be reasoned with, after a fashion. After a fashion. Okay, where have I got people to talk to? The Chantry remains. Some Chantry clerics were openly appreciative once Inquisition soldiers arrived at the Grand Cathedral. Without the Templars, they've resorted to mercenaries to protect Chantry property from looting. Other clerics, however, fled in terror, assuming we were coming either to arrest or kill them. The, these are no longer a problem, and those who remain should provide valuable political support. Cullen. I, don't, I love the fact that he was like, we're just going to bring them and they're just going to stand there, which is a very Templar, um, Templar way, isn't it? Red Jenny says, drop and grab. The papers we received from Sarah's friends document a Lord's sabotage of a rival's marriage. Quite the scandalous affair. Very useful in playing our influence. Thank you, um, Sarah. Why is that just red now? So we've got truth or dare and choose successor and lead slides. I don't know if it's leads. Uh, the, did I already do the other one? I did, yes, okay. The Cult of Andraste. It's incredible how many passages remained undiscovered even after the Chantry's arrival, and they scoured every inch of these mountains for years in search of anything related to the sacred ashes. The cult didn't build all of this. It was here long before, and who knows how many years it would take to find it all. Of the new passengers uncovered during the search, most were long empty or contained goods far beyond salvage. A few, however, yielded some artifacts of interest, and one evidently contained strange runes we have yet to translate. If we can find someone capable of doing so, they might prov prove of use. And we've got another Life Ward Amulet, which I believe is the one that makes you survive a KO. So that's good. Ooh, we've got the Secrets of Andreste now. That mean oh no, that means we've got four quests to choose from instead of three. Oh dear. Okay, so first of all, we're of course going to do the Secrets of Andreste. Because, you know, follow on. So the runes discovered in the mountain passage during the recent search are of a type never seen before, neither to Vinter nor Elven, and perhaps dating back to the time of Andraste herself. There are few who might be able to translate the script, and the benefit of doing so is unknown. Uh, we have agents with magical knowledge and the means to acquire texts. Let us work on this ourselves. Or I know of several and even scholars who can be discreet. They would happily translate the runes for us. Ooh, I feel like we should do this ourselves, you know? Keep it down low. But then again, we are currently distrusted by a lot of people. So outside help would be of use. And I do trust Josephine with, you know, and even scholars who could be discreet. That means that if we ever had to like talk about these runes, we have people that can come up and say yes, we we read of them. So yes, just be at your service. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't know why the Inquisition would need bees, so I'm just gonna have a look on this side of the thing first. Let's go choose successor and leads. Part of a Ben Hasserath report noting the current fight for succession in Leeds, which has been without a direct ruler since Duke Lamash died early in the Orlesian Civil War. It's quite a while ago. 
The duchy will go to one of the three members of the dead duke's family, all of whom have possible claims to the position due to the complex nature of Elysian politics. His cousin Carolina, already a duchess by marriage, his daughter Monet, whose claim is muddied by her youthful naivete and the fact that her father pushed her into a life of service to the Chantry after his wife's death, likely to protect her from the dangers of the game, and his brother John Gaspard, an ambitious and cunning man who has been searching for power. Carolina is capable and not overly invested in overseeing Leeds personally. Monet would be the most easily manipulated, but less likely to be useful. Jean Gaspard would be difficult to manipulate and could present a threat if he succeeds his brother. Any of the three candidates could be booked could become a valuable ally to the Inquisition, but the other two must be removed from play first. I feel like Carolina is the best choice. So, yeah, Josephine is the one that can get rid of Carolina, which I don't think we should do. I can destroy Carolina's marriage with four words and the proper glove on the le left on the proper table. But luckily she's busy, so we don't have to do it with her. Monet would do better in the Chantry than in the game. I can see that she is encouraged to take vows. Jean Gaspard is a chevalier and a capable military leader. If you want him removed, I dare say we might recruit him for ourselves. Hey, that's a thing. Get him under our... Yeah, let's, let's try this. Cullen's being a little bit... A little bit... Um, manipulative himself, isn't he? I didn't know he was capable of that. Yeah, let's try that one, Colin. Right. And then we will do Truth or Dare, the Imperial Courts. Uh, a letter addressed to Vivian lies open on the table. A note has been added to the top, which reads, Josephine, darling, you should take care of this. Okay, so maybe we don't do it with her. We'll read it when we come back. If they save the person that they want to deal with it, I feel like they're always the best person to deal with it, you know? So, the Inquisition needs bees. I do not know how someone will come to this idea, but I can see the use. It is a large area to search, however. A memo from Josephine written on a note from Sarah. I like their little relationship, Josephine and Sarah, because they're like... She's the only one that kind of takes her seriously. So, know what ruins a party? Bees. I know a man who teaches how to jar them safe but angry. Stingy, no good for honey, but great for throwing. He's somewhere south. <laughs> somewhere south, thank you for that. Sarah has scribbled a jar of bees hit from someone in the face. Also, a butt. So I can send runners among the bands. If this weapon can help, it will be found. If he's peddling them to fight forces, my people will find the trail. And it's too large of an area to cover. Bounty hunters are a simpler bet. I do like Liliana's thing. The other ones seem way too much effort. So let's go with let's Liliana. And so that's three for three. And... Hinterlands, fast travel. I would like to venture forth. Yes, I would. I will bring Sarah with us instead of Varric. We'll bring Iron Bull instead of Cassandra, and we'll bring Solus because he wants to do something there, so that's a good choice. Right, we're back in the hinterlands, guys. Just looking at my people. So let's go talk to the uh, the farmhands. Thank you. I'm glad that you had to tell me that. We'll hand in... Um, these ones and then we'll see what else needs doing i had a look at my map it's daunting looking at it i don't know whether i want to show you <laughs> where am i going yes let me talk to these guys hey bron if those refugees are going to defend themselves they'll need real defenses i've got a few ideas. yes i built the watchtowers thank you i built watchtowers in the areas you recommended nicely done that will give both your refugees and our farmers some warning next time trouble pays a visit. Good, good, I'll good, speak good. To the master and have weapons sent to your people at the crossroads. Thank you. 
And then we need to hand in the one about wolves. What's that one over there? In the saddle. We'll leave that one alone for a little bit. You deal with the wolves. And our farmers will be safe. I have. I stopped the wolves. The wolves should be back to normal now. They shouldn't be any further trouble. That's good to hear. I'll send word to the farmers and let my husband know what you've done. Thank you. It may not seem like much, but you've given this land hope it desperately needed. I like how she says that, and I can see the rift in the background. It's just right there for the taking. I think I passed it a couple of times, and it was just... It was too powerful, you know? Uh, okay. Hey, dude. Dude. Elena says you got rid of those demon-cursed wolves. It should be safer for our farmers. Good. Now. You've held up your end of our bargain inquisition. You'll have my whole stable and good hands to go with it. Thank you. Will you join the inquisition? You sent your stable hands and your horses to the inquisition. What about you? Well, you've cleaned up the area and I can't say I'm not tempted. Still. It feels wrong to abandon my land to go play horse master No, again. I need you. Oh, we can help you. You know, the Inquisition comes across horses from all over, Theta. We've got, like, yeah, one with a sword in its head. I'll look to your horses myself. Never let it be said that Redcliffe gave less than the best. Just let me settle matters here and say goodbye to my wife. Oh, his wife's going to be pissed at us. Cool. We've got another guy to join us. Uh, what is that over there? In Hush Whispers. We do want to do that one, but not quite yet. We'll work our way up to it, okay? Have I been in this place? I can't remember now that I've left. I'm like, hmm. Is there anything? In I guess not. I decided to do uh, the... Um, what is... That's a thing in the jig. Why is that here? Or oh, maybe it's not. It looks some, like something use, useful. Is it an Australian or something? Or an, I don't know. I can't remember what they look like. But yeah, I'm sort of working my way around. So I was like, I'll deal with the Templars. Deal with the Mages. And then we will deal with Solus' little jaunt. Do not cough. Set him on fire. And then we'll set him more on fire. You're okay. Although the fact that you're so weak already makes me miss uh, Cassandra. No offense to you. She's just, that was a very easy fight, and she's never that uh, weak-willed. Did you just lob that um, thing at me? It looked like you did. I see some people up here. Hi, fellas. And then I just panic them. Why do you guys always hit me? I am bold. Do something. You're just chucking shit. This is what happens when I go out without um, Sandra. Stop punching me down. Deal with him. I don't think you can even see me over the thing. There we go. Just iron. I was like, when's the loot? No loot, just iron. Ooh, thank you. What's in the big box? Anything over here? Oh, I discovered it. Is it? Oh, oh, that looks like a thing. 
deal the with the Templars. I see them. We'll deal with the archer. Anybody stop just oh you are you are now. I was like there's nobody over there and all of a sudden there was. That's unfair. There's some people over there, but somebody up here? Around here somewhere? Ooh, onyx. I need that for something, don't I? No, you do not hurt me. I hurt you. There's just so much fire going on. I love it. I do like that he's not good at crowd control. That's the road sorted for those refugees, right? Right. We must still deal with the apostates, however. Right. That is what we're going to do next, because I think they're just over the road, aren't they? We took a quick pit stop to ah, we're in the witch stop now. Witch wood. So creepy. Like, do you think they came because that's what it was called? It was called the witch wood, so they were like, yes. This is the perfect place for me. Or do you think it was for a different reason? Have I been here? Yes, I have. What on earth is going on in there? I don't know, but we'll definitely need that key. Okay, so there's some people around here. And the landmark, so we'll head this way. I've definitely been here before. Excuse me, I'm bow. I'll take them. I will do this one. And then we will uh work out which way to go. There's some more things over here, so I'm thinking over here. Oh yeah, this looks like a place that they uh, hang out. I sense yep. magical energies ahead. The mages cannot be far. There was somebody there. I just thought it was random shoots. But no, there was a guy there. Oh, this is somebody hitting Solus as well. Two people hitting Solus. The poor dear. me you thought wrong I don't know whether that be any use at all yeah it was useful a couple of people whoa what happened to my uh my screen then that was a bit weird 
Hey, I leveled up. Just so immune to everything I send away. There we are. Dead. Refugees should have an easier time on the key road. Perfect. Ooh, there's a quest there. What's this over here then? Hey fella. A uh, lady. Watch yourself. Bandits up ahead. It's something anyway. They're blocking the road. Ah. Are you sure the bandits? You don't think they're bandits? Bandits wait until people are vulnerable, then hit them fast so nobody escapes. These bastards show themselves too early. They care more about driving people away than taking loot. They're either stupid, or they're more than just bandits. And they're too well armed for stupid. Tell me about them then, what they do in specifically. What can you tell me about the attackers on the road? Several groups, some of them with bows. They've got better armor than most around here. It's too many for us. You head out there, careful you don't get flanked. They don't take prisoners. Goodbye. Thanks for the warning. So, yes, we need to deal with that. I've gone the wrong way. I was like, I was, I'm picking up that shard on my way here, but I guess I'm not anymore. I'm just gonna head straight to where Solus needs us. I see them. went right past it. Didn't expect it to take that long. According to my research, the ancient elves may have set up wars here. If we can find the artifacts they used, it yes, may help strengthen That's the why we're here. That's why we're here, Solar. Easy, right? Too easy. Piss. Another one down here. We loot and then we move on. Something else here. Help it all. Hello. Peace. I am no danger to you. My name is Merit. By your weapons, I see you come ready for battle. Perhaps we face a common enemy in these demons. We do. What are you doing out here? Are you fighting the demons on your own? Fighting the demons is pointless. There will always be more. And I have no means of closing the rifts. But I have heard of elven artifacts that measure the veil. They may tell us where new rifts will appear. I was not expecting so many demons, however. I believe one of the artifacts is nearby. Can you help me reach it? Yes, we will help. It sounds worth investigating. Thank you. It shouldn't be too much farther ahead. It's kind of weird that... Thanks for joining me. I do not think I could have done this alone. Uh, how did you end up here? How did you come to be here? I was, um, first of Clan Venen. I left in service of my clan and saw that great tear in the veil on my journey. I know more of magic and the veil than any Shemnan, so I hope to help. Maharal, darling. I... we should keep moving. What was that all about? Oh, energize. Who are you talking about there? Me? Or him?
Oh, I like doing that inside where you can block the entire way through. That was nice. Okay, now I need it to go away, please. heard of this but never seen it before. It is called Veilfire. It is a form of sympathetic magic. A memory of flame that burns in this world where the veil is thin. Cool. Uh, does it matter which way we go down? I doubt it. Oh, but there's a thingy so we'll light it. And yet that gives normal flame. That's weird. Normal flame. Is it sh no, it's still normal. That's very odd. Oh, that's just right up me now. We need another artifact. Another artifact. Excuse me, I need to take this. If we activate that crystal, it should react to the strength of the veil. Okay. I'll do it in a second. Let me just have a look around. See what's there. See what's available. See, we've got things to light, you know? Yeah, that looks like the thing that we found when we were walking around in that house. I don't know whether I, I'm actually. But yeah, that's weird. The veil fire must be making the runes legible. Ooh. Weapon enchantment. Fire rune. All right. Nice. Nice going with the weird magic fire. Yes, the wards are helping to strengthen the veil. This area should be safer for travelers now. Cool. That was a very quick and easy thing. Where's thingy gone? Where's the girl, woman? So slightly approved us doing that. Well, that should prove useful. Where are you? There and you are. And it seems the ancestors left something for me as well. Interesting. I believe our alliance is concluded. Go in peace, stranger. Uh, so us. Mahalani, Maglandeval, the Anasalim. I. Perhaps you're right. Here, take it. Go with Mithal's blessing. Yes, she. We just like, no, we won't want you talk. Uh, how do I get rid of this light? Uh, it just disappears. Fair enough. While we are here, we'll deal with the rest of the bandits. We want to make everywhere travelling as safe as possible. And if that means, uh, you know, taking these guys out, we'll take them out. I've missed that one completely. I've missed it. Running from us, feel a bit, bit sad, a bit upsetting doing that. But uh, well, sometimes that's what they deserve, you know. Thank you. I'll take that. I'll take that. And what is that? A note? Orders. The patrol pattern is not negotiable. Upon any encounter resulting in injuries, mark trail and withdraw to the villa. We must remain in fighting condition to apply appropriate force and keep refugees clear from the area. So they're definitely doing something. Are they in here? Because this is where, like, a camp is, so I assume we take it out and we get to camp. Yes. Hey, fellas. Boom. Just pop that there. I can't really see what's going on through there, but I'll trust that I'm hitting things. Yep, yep, he's running. We got him. Oh. Okay, 
so complete. Lovely. Oh, wait a second. Let me just loot some stuff. I nearly walked the complete other way. And I was like, no, we need to uh, set up the camp. Just so we can fast travel here if we need to. There was something else. Oh, just these. Okay. Iron. Iron. Not a bad spot to camp. Not a bad spot. That's probably why they chose it. Plus, I was going to say we need more um, potions, but it looks like we've full up anyway. Yay. And that's it for my latest episode of Dragon Age Inquisition. I really hope you're enjoying it. I'm certainly enjoying playing it. If you are, please consider subscribing to my channel using the button on the right. And there are videos on the left that you can click on to watch more of me. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.